Hey, what's up? It's Cody with Blood Money MMA Bets, and I'm back for another prediction video. I'm going to be breaking down UFC Vegas 42 this week. Uh, we're going to do a recap of UFC 268 from last week, and then we'll get right into this UFC Vegas 42. Um, last week, I went 4-3 and three for negative one unit. Um, could have been a great week if a couple, a couple fights would have went a little different. Um, the four winning bets I had were Ode Osborne, 1.5 units to win 0.95 units. Um, I had Chris Barnett, 1.75 units to win 1.25 units. That, that was a six spinning roundhouse kick. Um, I had Dustin Jacoby and Shane Burgos in a, par, a two-fight parlay, two units to win 2.1 units. And then I had Kobe Covington over 2.5 uh, rounds, 1.5 units to win one unit. My losses were, uh, I had another parlay in. It was Phil Hawes and Mel Melsig Bagdasarian. Phil Hawes, man, came out looking great, uh, was just piecing up uh, Chris Curtis and then gets hit with one shot. He kind of got lazy, I think, because he was just piecing him up so good. Um, got hit with one shot. He, I don't know. He just don't have a great ch chin, I guess, man. But that was sad. That was a 5.25 uh, 5 unit uh, flip for me. Um, I have Welly Zhang, 2.3 units to win uh, two units and... I thought she won that fight. I thought she won the first three rounds, but hey, Rose did good. It is what it is. And then my last loss was Frankie Edgar, 1.25 units to win 1.8 units. Um, great fight. I, I took him as the underdog. Marlon Vera um, kicked his face off in the third round, so, you know, that sucked. But, um, yeah, so uh, four and three minus one unit. But if Phil Hawes just – I mean, I already had one leg of the parlay done. If Phil Hawes just doesn't get knocked out like that, uh, I would have been plus 425. But – it's UFC, man. It's tough. It is what it is. But uh, let's get into UFC Vegas 42. Um, the main event is Max Holloway versus Yair Rodriguez. Um, it's not the greatest card. I found a couple decent betting spots that I like, but uh, it's really not the best card. There's maybe like two or three good fights on it. But um, yeah, last week I had seven bets in, and usually I have a little system where I do five bets every week. I try to win three out of five. And um, if I win three out of five, usually I win like $100 or a unit. And then um, if anything extra after that, I, I just consider like gravy. And um, so if I can go four out of five, five out of five, that's awesome. But um, I went, I bet seven bets last week and um, I ended up going four and three. Like I said, could have been five and two easily. But uh, yeah, I'm going to stick to my my usual five bets. Um, but yeah, let's get in. Let's let's pick some winners for this uh, this card. Fight number one for this card is in the men's light heavyweight division. We got Kennedy and Joku versus Da Un Jung. Um, Kennedy and Joku is nine and one. He's currently sitting at plus one hundred five. Uh, da Un Jung is fourteen two and one, and he's currently uh, minus one thirty five. I did see the odds changed a little bit. Da Un Jung went down. To, I believe he's like minus uh, one twenty now. So Kennedy and Joku would be at like minus one hundred five. But um, this should be a good fight. It's two big uh, light heavyweights going at it. Um, Kennedy and Joku, he's good. He's got good stamina. Um, slow paced, uh, slow paced. He's got power, but he just don't really use it that much. I mean, he's a big dude. He's six five uh, with an eighty three inch reach, but he really just don't fight like that. He's not really all that aggressive. Um, Dao Un Jung, he's got good striking, good wrestling. Uh, he's a tough dude. Um, you seen his first fight with Ibris and Magam Magamov or whatever. He's not that good, but he came out and threw like 120 strikes in a round and a half on uh, Da Wun Jung, and he just took all that and then ended up choking him out. Um, this is going to be a good fight. Uh, I don't know. It's it's pretty much a pick em, and uh, I don't have no bet on this, but I'm going to take Da Wun Jung by decision. I think he's just going to be more active. Um, he might even land a couple takedowns and stuff, but uh, Njoku just don't, he don't, uh, uh, he don't throw enough volume for me. So yeah, give me Da Wun Jung by decision, but uh, I'm not betting this, but I, w I was tempted to bet Da Wun Jung in this, but it could just be a toss up fight. Uh, fight number two is in the men's lightweight division. We got uh, Mark DeCasey versus Rafael Alves. Uh, Mark DeCasey's 14 and four, and uh, he's minus 175. Rafael Alves is 19 and 10, and he's currently plus 150. Um, this is going to be a good fight. Uh, Mark DeCasey, he's he's real well rounded, got good striking, good uh, good boxing, good kicks. Uh, he's super tough. He's got good wrestling, good defensive wrestling. Um, He's going to have a little size advantage here where he's 5'10", uh, and uh, Rafael Alves is only 5'8". Uh, he's got a, he's also got a 5-inch reach advantage. Um, Rafael Alves, he's super dangerous in the first round. You see him against Demir Ismagulov, and if you watch any of his other fights in smaller promotions, I mean, he, he, he finishes people, chokes, knockouts, everything. Um, his Dana White contender series fight was sick, but that was all at 145. 
Um, this is going to be a good fight. The first round is going to be super risky, but uh, I got Mark De Mark DeCasey winning this fight. Um, I think he should win 30-27, but like I said, that first round is going to be tough. Alves is very explosive and knockout power and all that, but um, DeCasey was just in there with Rafi Al-Fazib, and he didn't get knocked out by him, so I, I don't see him just getting knocked out in the first round by Alves. Um, giving Mark DeCasey, like I said, by a decision, and um, I actually do got a bet on him. He He's my lock of the, lock of the weekend. Uh, for like a mid-range fighter, you know, he's, I got him at minus 175 and um, I got 2.75 units to win 1.55 units. And like I said, I just feel like he's better everywhere. He's bigger, better everywhere. Uh, give me Mark to Casey. And like I said, I, I bet him he's my biggest bet of the weekend. So, uh, all right, man. Uh, fight number three is in the women's flyweight division, uh, 125. It's uh, Courtney Casey versus Luana Jojua. Uh, Courtney Casey is nine and nine. She's minus 210. Uh, Liana Jojua is eight and four, and she's currently plus one seventy. Um, it's pretty much just going to be a terrible female fight. Neither one of these girls are good. It's weird that they're still even getting fights. Um, I, I'll take Courtney Casey by decision, just because Luana, uh, Liana Jojua is just she's looked terrible. I seen. I mean, when she beat Diana Belbito with that arm bar from guard, uh, that was nice. Most of her wins are like arm bars from guards and heel hooks. So I mean, if she can get Courtney Casey down, or if Courtney Casey takes her down. That's her, that's her way to win, but um, stand-up, her stand-up looks terrible, so uh, give me Courtney Casey by decision. I'm not really going to go into that fight too much. I have no bet on it and, and don't want to bet on that. Uh, fight number four is in the men's featherweight division, and we got Sean Woodson versus Colin Anglin. Uh, Sean Woodson is 8-1. and one. He's minus 275. Colin Anglin is 8-2, and two, and he's plus 215. Um, this is going to be a good fight. you got a, a striker versus kind of like a striker and a grappler. Um, Sean Woodson's huge. He's 6'2 with a 79-inch reach. Um, and uh, Colin Anglin's 5'9 with a 71-inch reach. So, I mean, Sean Woodson's huge for the featherweight division. 6'2, 79-inch reach in the featherweight division. That's, that's just crazy. Um, he ba he started a boxer. He's got great boxing. He's got good takedown defense. Um, when he gets taken down, he's all right. He don't have the best get-up game. Uh, he's been taken down in almost every fight he's fought in, if not every fight um, he's fought in the UFC. But um, he's good. We got Colin Anglin. He's uh, he's very well rounded. He's got good wrestling. Wrestled wrestled out of Michigan State. Um, he's got good striking, good clinch striking. When he fought uh, uh, Melsic Bagdasarian in that, he he got knocked out in the second round. But in the first round, there was a couple times in the clinch where he's throwing nice elbows, knees. Uh, he's got good kicks. Um, We've we seen him get one takedown on Bagdasarian, but um, he couldn't really hold him down. Bagdasarian's a big, strong guy, though. Um, Yeah, in this fight, I'm actually going to take uh, Colin Anklin for, a, like, a boring decision. I do think he he's the best wrestler that uh, Woodson's ever faced, so I do think that Anklin's going to be able to get a couple takedowns. Um, He's got good enough striking to stand up with Woodson, so um, I think he can stay safe on his feet and land some takedowns. I'm not, I, I don't have a bet in on this fight, but... um. For, for an underdog, for that price, plus 215, I mean, I think he's got way more of a chance than that. They're both pretty good young prospects, so we're giving Colin Anglin, no bet on that. Um, uh, next fight's fight number five in the men's uh, light welterweight division. This is going to be a good one. We got Miguel Baeza versus Chaos Williams. Uh, my, Miguel Baeza's 10-1. and one. He's currently sitting at minus 140. Uh, Chaos Williams is 12-2, and two, and he's currently sitting at plus uh, 110. Um, this is going to be a great fight. You got two guys that are great at striking. Um, both of them got good power. Both of them um, got good movement. It's really two up and coming prospects for the welterweight division. Uh, it's wild that they're even having them fight. But this is going to be this is probably going to be the best fight on the card, other than the Max Holloway fight. Um, you got Miguel Baez, a great leg kick. Seeing what he did to Ponza Nibio. Um, he's a black belt in jujitsu. He's got good boxing. Um, you seen uh, he knocked out Matt Brown with his boxing. Um, He's good. He's very tough. You've seen the Ponzinibbio fight. I mean, he's very tough, but um, I think he's got a little bit of a suspect chin. I've seen him get hurt in every single fight that he's in. Um, Chaos Williams, too. I mean, he's got power, power. You've seen with against Alex Moreno. You've seen against um, Rachman um, or Ahasin. Um, he can knock people out cold and stiff. I mean, the guy's good. Uh, he's got good crisp boxing. I think he should be undefeated in the UFC. Um, that fight with Semmelsberger was awesome. He beat him. Semmelsberger's is tough. Um, Michelle Pereira, I had him win that fight. I don't know what the judges seen, but I had Chaos Williams landing the harder shots, more cleaner shots. He's got real crisp boxing. Like he's always got his good guard. He keeps his shoulders in. 
Um, I'm taking uh, Chaos Williams in this fight. I think that first round, he might get his leg chewed up a little bit like Ponzinibbio. But um, hopefully they just they address that. And um, if, if he can throw, throw a good boxing while Miguel, Miguel Baez is throwing them kicks, um, I think that he'll be able to catch him. Uh, Chaos Williams hits so hard. You see him with, with Mar like I said, Moreno. You see him with Rachman. I mean, he he knocks people out. Um, give me Chaos Williams, though, by decision. I think uh, that first round is going to be tough, but I think he's going to be able to just beat up on ba by, uh, Miguel Baez just like Ponzinibbio did. So give me uh, Chaos Williams by decision, winning the second and third round. Um, I got a bet on Chaos Williams. He's currently plus 120. Um, I The bet I got him at, at the casino tonight was at plus 120. And uh, I got two units to win 2.4 units on Chaos Williams. And um, like I said, it's going to be a good fight. But I just think Chaos Williams is tougher. Like just a tougher individual and, and hits harder. So give me Chaos Williams. And uh, like I said, I got a decent bet on him. But I do like him. Uh, fight number six is in the women's flyweight division. We got Cynthia Calvillo versus Andrea Lee. Uh, Cynthia Calvillo is 9-3-1. and one. She's currently minus 125. Andrea Lee is 12-5. and five, And she is currently minus 105. Um, this is going to be a good fight for the girls. Uh, it's in the uh, uh, flyweight division. I believe this is going to be Andrea Lee's first fight in the flyweight division. I think she's been fight, fighting at, or, uh, uh, yeah, she's been fighting at strawweight for her whole career. I'm pretty sure could have that mixed up, but um, this is going to be a good fight. Can, Cynthia Calvillo is going to be a little bit littler at 5'4 with the 64 inch reach, where Andrea Lee's 5'6 with the 69.5 inch reach. So it's got a 5.5 inch reach. Um, Cynthia Calvillo, she's got decent boxing. She has no power, no nothing. She's got good movement, decent boxing. She's got good, decent wrestling. She's got good uh, BJJ when she does get to the ground. She can hold it there. Uh, decent submissions. Um, Andrea Lee, she's got good striking. She's Muay Thai based. Um, she's got good striking, good leg kicks, decent boxing. Excuse me. She's good in the clinch. Um, she's got decent takedowns herself, but her... her uh, uh, defensive wrestling isn't all that great, but um, that's against kind of bigger girls like Roxanne Matafari and them. Um, this is going to be a good fight. Uh, I actually was, at the beginning, when I first was looking at this fight, I actually was thinking Cynthia Calvillo, but she's just looked so terrible in her last couple fights. Um, just terrible. I don't know. It's like almost she don't want to be in there. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Andrea Lee in this. I, I, I went back and forth, but I stuck with Andrea Lee. And um, I'm going to take her by decision. And I actually got a bet in on her. Um, for Andrew Lee, she was plus uh, 100. So she's another dog. I took Chaos Williams as a dog. Uh, Andrew Lee was plus 100 tonight when I went to the casino. So uh, I got two units to win two units on Andrew Lee. Um, it's going to be a tough back and forth fight. I just hope she don't get taken down and held down. But I just think with her being bigger and stuff, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out better for her. So yeah, give me uh, Andrew Lee by decision. Um, fight number seven is in the men's lightweight division, and we got Tiago Moises versus Joel Alvarez. Um, this is gonna be a good fight too. Uh, Tiago Moises is fifteen and five. He's currently minus two thirty five. Uh, Joe Alvarez is eighteen and two, and he's currently plus one ninety five. Um, first off, we gotta address like the size difference. You, Joel Rodriguez is six three with a seventy seven inch reach. And uh, Tiago Moises is 5'9 with a 70.5 inch reach. So he's going to have a 6 inch uh, height advantage and uh, a 6.5 inch reach advantage. So this is going to be a good fight. Both these guys are jiu-jitsu fighters with good striking. Um, it's going to be a back and forth fight. I don't think the odds should be near as big. Like Tiago Moises, I, I, I give him the um, wrestling advantage. So he's. I guess what the, the bookies are going on is that he's going to have the wrestling advantage. So he's going to be on top. But uh, Yoel, uh, Yoel Alvarez, Joel Alvarez is tough everywhere. I mean, and uh, he's got good ground and pound. He's got slick submissions. He's real long and rangy on his feet, and he's only getting better. We haven't seen him for a little while, but um, I'm sure he's only getting better and better. Better. He's still a young dude, um, sitting at 18 and two. Um, I'm gonna go with Joel uh, Alvarez as an underdog. Um, I really do think that he can get like a second or a third round sub on. Uh, to Tiago Moises, I think he can even get a club and stuff because Tiago Moises got good tight striking, good defense. But uh, Yoel, uh, Joel Alvarez has long striking, weird kind of awkward striking, but he's got straight crisp punches. But um, yeah, I think he can get him with the club and stuff. I think he can catch him. So um, I'm not gonna bet that. But as a, for a big underdog like that, I just don't think the odds should be like that. Give me a uh, give me a uh, uh, Joel Alvarez for a finish in the second or third round. Uh, fight number eight is in the man's, men's bantamweight division, 135. We got Yadong Song versus Julio Arce. 
And uh, Yadon Song is 17, 5, and 1, and he's currently minus 160. Julio Arce is 17 and 4, and he's currently plus 130. Um, I wrote this yesterday by today. By the time I went to the casino, actually, Yudong Song was minus 135. So a lot of money came in on Julio Arce. He was plus uh, 110. So a lot of money came in on Julio Arce. Um, this is going to be a good fight. Both these guys are very well rounded. I mean, they're both good everywhere. I would say Yudong Song has better takedowns. Um, I would say Yudong Song is faster. Um, kind of more explosive, but Julio Arce is tough. He's got good boxing. He's got good kicks. Um, he's pretty explosive himself. He's he doesn't have as much of knockout power. You've seen he did knock out uh, Andre Yule, but um, yeah, uh, most of his fights are like split decisions. And um, Yudong Song, I, I just think he's an up and comer. He's super good. Like I said, he's fast, explosive, and I think if he needs to, he can get this fight to the ground. Um, you've seen uh, what was Shaman Rice had had some uh, uh, luck getting him getting Julio Arce to the ground. So. Give me your dong song. Um, I'll take him by a, a close decision. Um, but yeah, I, I think I mean I think he should win all three rounds. But but Ar Arce's tough. He's gonna be in there for all three. It's gonna be close. Um, I do have a bet on this. I bet your dong uh, song your dong two units to win one point five. Like I said, I got him at uh, minus one thirty five. So I I might not be. I mean it might be even money by the time it starts. But wanted to get it in. Um, this week, like I said, I bet five bets, five straight up bets, no props, no nothing, no parlays. I, I, I hate parlays. There's nobody to parlay on this besides maybe Max, but you don't get no value in them. But um, yeah, I, I hate parlays. If, if it wasn't for parlays last week with everybody being such big favorites, um, I would have never had Phil Hawes on anything. So, but uh, yeah, let's move on to fight number nine. It's in the men's middleweight division. Uh, we got Roman Dolides versus Kyle Dawkins. Uh, Roman Dolides is nine and one, and he's currently sitting at plus one eighty. We got Kyle Dawkins, who is ten and two, and he's currently sitting at minus two twenty. Um, this is going to be a good fight. They're fighting at light heavyweight. Both these guys have been fighting at uh, middleweight, but they agreed to this. It was like a last minute thing where both their opponents fell off, so uh, they agreed to just fight at two hundred five, which I think uh, helps Roman Dolides uh, because he's already been. He was fighting at that before he cut down to one eighty five for his last two fights, but. Uh, yeah, this should be a good fight. I mean, we're gonna see definitely see what uh, Dolides is about. I mean, all he he's nine and one. All of his fights have been good, close fights. Uh, Trevin Giles even fight was super close. He lost that one, but um, uh, Kyle Dawkins. I mean, he's he's a savage. He he's got great clinch. He's got good striking. He's got good ground game. His wrestling's all right. I mean, you've seen he couldn't really even take down uh, Kevin Holland, but um, yeah, this is gonna be a real good fight, man. I think this is gonna be back and forth. Um, but uh, give me, give me, I'm gonna take Kyle Dawkins on a third round sub. I think he can wear him down, wear him down, wear him down, and I think he can actually uh, sub out the the uh, giant um, jujitsu guy himself and Roman Roman Dolides. So yeah, give me Kyle Dawkins. Fight's gonna be back and forth. I'm not betting on it because uh, I I just still don't know what Roman's about. But um, it, I don't know, and I just I don't think Dawkins should be that big of a, a favorite. But then again, I mean maybe he should be. We'll see. I'm not betting that fight. Staying away from it. Uh, fight number 10 is Felicia Spencer versus Leah Letson. Felicia Spencer, it's in the uh, feather women's featherweight division. Felicia Spencer is 8-3. and three. She's minus 305. Leah Letson is 5-1. and one. She's plus 245. I'm not going to go over this fight too much. Um, I'm going to take Felicia Spencer by decision. Um, I haven't seen Leah Letson in almost three years. Uh, yeah, Felicia Spencer by decision. I think that she, she might even be able to get like a ground and pound finish. If she, if she goes for takedown, she didn't go for none against Norma Dumont. So... Uh, we'll see. But if she goes for takedowns, does all that, I think she should be able to uh, take Lee, uh, get Leah Letson out of there. Give me your by decision finish. I don't know. I'm not betting it. I'd stay away from that fight. She's way, she, I mean, it's way too much money for women's MMA. MMA. So, uh, yeah, Felicia Spencer decision. Never bet it. Fight number 11 is in the men's heavyweight division. We got Ben Rothwell versus Marcos Ruggiero de Lima. Uh, ben Rothwell's 39 and 13. He's currently sitting at minus 150. Marcos Rogerio de Lima is 18 and 7. He's currently sitting at plus 120. Um, this is gonna be a good fight. Ben Rothwell, he's good everywhere. I mean, they're both older. Ben Rothwell's 40. Uh Marcos uh, uh Rogerio de Lima, I think he's like 38. Um, Ben Rothwell is gonna have a big size advantage in this fight. He's 6'4 with the 80 inch reach, and Marcos Rogerio de Lima is 6'1 with the 75 inch reach. So uh Rothwell is gonna be way bigger in this fight. Um, he's way tougher. Uh, uh de Lima, I mean uh, Rothwell hasn't been knocked out since 2009. Uh, Marcos Ruggiero de Lima, I mean, he's got good leg kicks, powerful leg kicks, but um, he's got no heart, he's got no stamina. Um, 
I believe, I, I mean, I wish if Ben Rothwell would just come out, land a couple punches, uh, take take uh, Delima to the ground. I think he could just submit him in the first round. He's so much bigger. He could just hawk him and goon him like uh, uh, Alexander Romanov did to him. But, um, I mean, if he stands there, he could get his leg chewed up. He could get beat up a little bit. But, like I said, Marcos Ruggiero de Lima has no heart and he gasses out. Um, ben Rothwell is all heart. He's going to fight you to the last second. Um, I think he should be a way bigger favorite than this. I fade de Lima all the time, except against, like, uh, who was it, Ben Sicilli. If you look at who Mar uh, Marcos Ruggiero de Lima's beat, the, it's the worst of the worst, man. I mean, not one of them guys is still in the UFC, and they were all terrible. So, uh, yeah, give me big Ben Rothwell by second round TKO, um, by ground and pound, I think. But uh, I went, I did put a bet in on that. I got 2.25 units to win 1.5 units on Ben Rothwell. And uh, that finishes out my five bets. But uh, I do, I think he gets it done and, and pretty easily. Fight number 12 to the main event. We got Max Holloway versus Yair Rodriguez. Men's bad and weight division. Uh, Max Holloway is 22 and six and he's minus 600. Uh, Yair Rodriguez is 13 and two and he's currently plus 400. Um, this is going to be a great fight. Yair Rodriguez, we don't get to see him fight that much. He really doesn't. I mean, it's like he fights every two years or something, it seems like. Um, he's got great striking. He's got, he's got really good kicks, good leg kicks, good head kicks. Um, he's got decent boxing. He's got power. He's got good elbows, Korean zombie. Um, he's got like explosive power. Uh, he's going to be real dangerous in that first round, but he's fighting Max Holloway. And we all know Max Holloway. Max Holloway is just a beast. I mean... He's never been knocked down his whole career in the UFC. So the odds that Yair Rodriguez comes out. But Yair Rodriguez does throw the crazy strikes that could could be the one to catch Max Holloway. That's why I wasn't putting him in no parlays, not betting him, um, doing nothing. I'm just going to sit back and watch this fight and hope it's a great one. But, uh, yeah, um, I got I, like I said, I think this is going to be a great fight. Max Holloway, it shouldn't go to the ground. No one's going to go for takedowns. Um Give me, give me it to be a close, tough fight. If you know, uh, feeling each other out for them first two rounds. Uh, like I said, Max ain't gonna go, gonna want to get hit with nothing too big. But um, by the end, by the middle to the end of the second, I think Max will be taking over with his boxing, his volume, his power shots, even with the leg kicks himself and all that. Um, like he always does. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take Max for a fourth round TKO. Yeah, he is tough. He's super tough. I don't think he's as tough as like uh. Calvin Cater and taking that beating or even Brian Ortega, but I think he, I mean, he's tough. I just, I don't think that he's going to be able to land his shots. So give me Max Holloway by a fourth round TKO. Um, didn't bet this fight at all. Just going to watch it. The odds are too crazy. Um, I am going to be nervous though. I love Max and I'm going to be nervous for him for that first round, round and a half because Yair does throw crazy strikes and um, he is super mean and tough them first couple rounds. So um, yeah, let's see what it is. Give me Max Holloway, fourth round TKO. Not going to bet it. Um, please like and subscribe to this video so I keep making some more of them. Um, go follow me on uh, Instagram. That's where I post all my bet betting stubs. It's Blood Money MMA Bets. Um, uh, like I said, I have five bets, no parlays. Vegas was built on parlays. I hate parlays. But the last two fights had like, I mean, what, 14, 15 fights. And out of them, four or five of them were... <laughs> excuse me, um, 200 or below. The rest of them were like, everybody's minus 300. So you had to parlay it. And I hate that. But, uh, yeah, this, this card, I got my five bets, uh, all straight bets. Excuse me. I got Mark, Mark, uh, DeCasey, 2.75 units to win 1.55 units. And like I said, man, that's my lock. That's who I got the biggest bet on. So I hope he comes through, keeps his guard up that first round. I'm like Phil Hawes. Uh, second second bet is Chaos Williams, uh, underdog pick, two units to win 2.4 units. Um, third pick is another underdog pick. We got Andrea Lee. Uh, she was plus 100. I got two units to win two units. Um, fourth bet is y Song Yadong, uh, two units to win 1.5 units. Fifth bet is Ben Rothwell, 2.25 units to win 1.5 units. And uh, like I said, hopefully some of these cards and uh, some of these fights in this card end up being good and make it a good card. But um, yeah, I only see two or three good fights. But uh, hopefully we'll make something out of it and we're going to make this money back on even like you losing that one unit still still up and then send videos like 32 units. But I hate using, losing that one unit. So this week, let's get it back. Let's get a bunch of it back. Thank you guys for watching. Um, I'll see you guys next week.